Austin, Texas. Oh, that's Close, close, in 1997. The secret of Jewish survival is really a secret. It's in a way a big mystery, more than just a secret. It's a big mystery. In fact, uh, uh, Kant, in, the, in his time, once said that basically, as you possibly know, he based his antonomies about existence and, and, and non-existence of God. But he says that personally he has two reasons to that what I call move him towards a belief that God did does exist. One is the harmony of heaven, and the other is the continuous existence of the Jewish people. So you see, a great thinker, and no doubt, looks at the existence of the Jewish people as a mystery on one hand. And something as, as similar in magnitude, at least in, the, in importance, to the, what I call to the order of the heavens above us. So, it is really indeed a mystery. In fact, there is an, another, I would say, another mystery that I'm not going to discuss now, which is the mystery of anti anti-Semitism. This is also a mystery, but I'm not going to discuss that now. But rather about about uh, Jewish existence. Now, uh, to be rational, firmly rational, I would say that the real reason, the main reason of our existence is because we have a divine promise that we will exist. Now, that is what I'm saying, that is, that is speaking rationally. Now, uh, going to other, other points, it will be perhaps less rational, but at least uh, more, uh, more, that, uh, more of those things that we can do. Now, we can deal with different, different sides of the, same, of the same problem, but I would put it, if I want, I want to make it some kind of a, of a orderly a speech, I would say that the main point of our survival is the way that we invest. And I'm not speaking about our uh, financial investments one way or another, but rather about how we deal with our resources, our, how we deal with our, our powers. And in general, I would say, I would put it in the following way. Uh, the secret of our existence is that we invest in the future. Even though everybody knows that we are connected with the past and we, are, we have a very long and glorious past, that is not the real importance and surely not the secret of our survival. The past is not a promise for the future. The future has to be made, in a way, built. If it is not built, then it, it doesn't exist. So, it is in many ways that was in the past. It is still in the present. The real way in which one can speak about securing as much as one can secure anything, Jewish survival, Jewish existence, and continuation, which is investing in the future. Now, I am not going to talk now about something which is of great importance, but I'm afraid it is a little bit out of my, of my, of the per what whatever I'm permitted to speak about is. But one of the points there is, we are as a people in most countries, surely in Europe. We have a, I would say, a almost a no no growth, and or perhaps we are diminishing demographically. Now, I'm not speaking not about intermarriage and nor about assimilation. I'm just speaking about just the ratio between births and deaths. 
So, one of the ways, and that is in a very general way, any place that has children means that people have a, a hope for the future. They think about the future. Children basically mean the future. I'm not speaking about as an as as a as a way of assuring whatever what will happen to me in my old old age, but rather what is what is having children it is building something for the future, not for the for the for the a contemporary and I would say instantaneous feeling of what what re what happens to me or to my my feeling my behavior and my my uh, my pet dog or, or or pet ship. Basically, it is investing in the future. Now, this is something that I cannot, I really cannot uh, uh, preach to you, even though getting married and having children is one of the of the simple ways of speaking about about the Jewish future. That that is something that that in a way is essential to our existence. We were traditionally, usually we were people that had children, that cared about children and wanted to have them. And so that is that is a very essential point about any plan for the future in a small place or a big place in, in the city. But that is, as I said, something which is partially beyond what I'm uh, allowed to speak here. I cannot, I cannot uh, uh, speak at length about, about these points and about their importance. But investing in the future means you invest in schools more and more. You invest in education. You invest in not just in transmitting things, but in enhancing things. It's not enough, see, to keep things as they are. In fact, we are, in even whether it is demographically or politically or otherwise, we are running in, in a terrible, tough race against times. I don't have to tell you that Europe is changing one way or another. And these changes are not always uh, working for us. For us, as a, as a minority, for us, as connected with the State of Israel, which instead of being the, the center and the point of safety for our people, became uh, almost a point of to blame and to, and to, to, to cause trouble to our, ourselves. But in general, in general, the thing is that we are racing about survival. It is not a simple thing that in which our survival is assured, except, of course, if you trust completely, entirely, the, the what I call the divine promise. If then, if you trust, trust only that, and you don't do anything else, I don't know if it will work, but at least you can say that you have some, some grounds for, 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 for trusting. Otherwise, we, are, we have a race about existence, and we have a, a multiple number of dangers surrounding us, which is assimilation in the broadest sense of the word, assimilation which is to be, to remain distinct, in a culture that becomes more and more cosmopolitan, more and more equalized, even in Europe, when, when you have not just a common market, but you have sometimes, you, you have common, common ways of dressing, common ways of, of, of playing football, and common ways of, of feeling, thinking, and so on. Which means that our, our being a distinct people, something that is in one way is always alone we hope not to be lonely but we are always alone which means we are a separate entity in wherever we are in whatever whether the circumstances are very friendly or or not friendly, but we have to keep ourselves and for that I'm saying there is at least this rush the big impact of, of the of 
surrounding culture, surrounding civilization, and the changes that, that are made in the lives of, of people in general. These are something that we have to fight for, for existing. And there are also the other more particular powers that work against us, work against us from we, we have a tendency, a very clear tendency for being divided and dividing ourselves. It doesn't help. We have a tendency for dealing with small minor points and avoiding to the real the real problems that we are facing. Now that is that's not a, a, a new something new. It is an old problem, but this problem still exists now as it existed two thousand years ago. And it has it may be disastrous and as I say, we are under pressure. So it is not enough that we join and we run. Uh, if to, to say, to, to quote from a, from a children's book, it, it is that we, have to, we are running fast enough, perhaps, to keep in, in the same place. If we want to advance anything, we have to run twice as much. Because otherwise, we are dwindling, we are diminishing. You, we have all kinds, all kinds of statistics that proves it from every point of view, and so in order to 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 go on, to go on living, and to go on, not just surviving, as as a as a a, a memory of a of an ancient ethnic group, but surviving is something that is meaningful, that has something to say to the world, that has something to to give to others. In, in, in order to do that, we have to put much bigger impact. And as I said, our impact should be mostly and mainly into the future, which is, I, uh, with all the with all the importance of keeping old graveyards. These are not these are not the sources of our lives. Any graveyard, and any any dead person. Those people who are meaningful are, are still alive even when they die. But the griefs are not important. Keeping up old synagogues or old institutions is not the main point of our, of our survival. What we can and we have to do for, for, for struggling, for, for keeping is, as I said, investing in the future. In, in having schools and better schools and even better schools. We have to be, in order to live, we have to be excellent. Not just in order to compete with others, but in order to, to go on living as, a, as something that is meaningful, we have, to, we have to be excellent. So we have to, to create excellent schools, not just barely passing of doing, being what I call in the, in the, in the, in the higher, higher limit, the higher quarter of the population. We have to be much better in order to live, to survive. So it means investing in schools. And it means also, in a different way, investing in teachers of all levels. Investing also in something in creating suitable homes. Now, I'm not speaking about having more pictures of Picasso or Matisse. That, that is not what makes any kind of a home like, home like. But in order to do it, we have to make our homes breeding places for, for, for the future. In a, in a deeper sense, it's breeding places for our own continuous existence. We can be uh, children that have, as, as it is in so, so many places, some of us are circumcised, and some of us are even passing the a ceremony of Bar Mitzvah, and some other Jewish ceremonies. But what happens to us with the time? Sometimes what happens with the time is we ourselves, not only our children, we ourselves begin, begin to diminish, to disappear, 
to evaporate into the surrounding culture. So we have to build houses in order, in order to be able to continue our life, to, to build our, our castles, not in order to hide from others, but in order to, to build something that is, that is of essence, to build something that is meaningful, to build something that is for, for, for a couple and for parents, is something that they can give, transmit, and live in. Which means, uh, look, uh, <clears throat> you, can, you can have a Jewish home without lots of, lots of, uh, of uh, ornaments. But the, the, a Jewish home needs a mezuzah. Not, please don't be, understand me, I'm not speaking about the mezuzah as a guardian on your door. That's, that's, it may be helpful, but that's not the point. You, you put a mezuzah on the door, on the outside, just as you put a flag on an embassy, saying, I am here and I am a Jew. It's a small announcement, but it means it is meaningful. You have to, to have a home in which you yourself and your children will encounter your Jewishness. It doesn't have to be to be expensive, or expensive and kitschy ornaments as they do in so many houses. But you have to keep books, even even when they are for just standing in the shelf, they are at least there books. I I advised so many people, if you if you if you want to do something helpful for your children, sometimes even for yourself. Hang on the walls the pictures of your grandparents and great-grandparents. Just to remember, not what the past is, but to remember who you are. That you belong. You belong to this, to this, I would say, to this group, to this tribe. And keep the home, uh, keep the home Jewish, which is, it's, it's a way of talking. I'm not just arguing for, for speaking any kind of a speci specialized Jewish, Jewish lingo, but it is important to keep, it, to keep the contents, to keep the matters that you speak about. It is not enough to speak from time to time what happens in the state of Israel. You cannot live generally, vicariously. You cannot live in, in, on the... Uh, in wherever you are, from Copenhagen to Copenhagen to, to New York, just on the, on the fact that there is a state of Israel. You have to create your own life because you have to create your own continuity. And your own continuity is, again, investing in, in children. From a kindergarten to, to as, a, as a high up as you can, investing in creating teachers. And if you can, even to pay them from time to time, somehow they like it when they're getting paid. But uh, you have to, to keep them, to keep them going, and to try to get the best that you can. You need from time, from, from time to time rabbis, so you, sh you should get rabbis that will not be just, again, for sitting in the, in the allocated place in the synagogue, but really people that can be and should be leaders of the community in one way. Try to, to find the people that will lead for a future, lead for a future. Again, those that will create something that will be not, to, not just tomorrow, but in 10 years' time. Somebody said, I'm not really sure who said it, but one of the definitions of who is a Jew it's not a it's not a halachic definition. It's not even a good sociological definition. But it's a good definition. A Jew is somebody that will have Jewish grandchildren. It's it's not funny, because that is one of the ways that I'm saying we are building not on the past. Having Jewish grandparents it doesn't guarantee anything. But you have to, care, to take care that you will have Jewish grandchildren, that you will have somebody that goes on in, in, the, in the future. Now, it is, not, it 
is not just a matter of, of having a bigger amount of Jewish studies. They are important. And I'm surely, I hope nobody will suspect me of, of speaking against, against the Jewish studies. But you see, Jewishness is not just a matter of quoting a number of books. And it is even more than living a certain way of life. It's a character. It's a type. And we have to create it. It is not... In some places, including Israel, we thought that somehow the genes are strong enough to survive. The genes can guarantee lots of things. Our color of eyes, and our, and our shape of, of nose. They cannot guarantee two things. They don't, they don't transmit memories and they don't transmit ideology. These have to be transmitted in a different way. You cannot trust the genes. You cannot say that somehow my children are Jewish children and so they will be. They won't be. They will be by name. You can, you could, you can put put uh, some kind of a, of a outside definition on them, but they want to be like this as people. So in order to, to, to have it, is, it is, again, and I'm speaking not about the, not just about the present, I'm speaking about the future. We have to meet each other. We have to find ways in the synagogue and out of the synagogue of meeting each other, of interacting with each other. I'm, please understand me, I'm not speaking and I'm not, I'm not arguing for creating a ghetto. Ghettos are a safeguard against physical uh, animosity. This, the, 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 the walls of the ghetto never protect a, a people from being attacked spiritually. And when we have no essence of our own, we are, we are swallowed by, by the surrounding atmosphere, whatever it is. It may be lower or higher, but will, will, be, will disappear. So we have to create it. We have to create it, not in, order, in a way of seclusion, but in order, in order of, of enhancing, enhancing our ability to go, to go on, to, to do something again for, for, for dealing with the future. And uh, uh, again, as a person that is interested in the past, in different ways, writing about history, dealing with old books and so on, still, we need new books, we need, need new children, we need also ideas, and we should, we, should, we should invest in all these things, invest in them, in having what I call, in order to become, to survive, we have to become better and better Jews, deeper. And in, in a way that is not just a matter of paying our debts to the past, to the dead parent, to the dead grandparents, and so on, by going to, to any kind of a Jewish a Jewish uh, a Jewish event, but rather, in order to live, it means that we have. As, as, if I sp speak about education, let me just say, educating the f for the future is not just educating children. Because children cannot be educated when the parents are not participating. You can't send your children to the Jewish school or to the Sunday school and, and go yourself to play cards or play golf and hope that the children won't, won't imitate your example rather than your, your speeches. Which means people have, in, if, if I want to survive, if I want to, to have any kind of future, we have to have education not just for children, but for adults as well.
and the adults have to be more educated. We have, uh, and in so many ways, a whole Jewish world, which is, which is made of something that was once the worst, the worst kind of, of, of uh, offense to, to, te- to give a person, which is Am Haaretz, ignoramus. Ignoramus, at least in the, in, the, in the Jewish sense, and we have more and more of these. Some of them have some, some smattering of, of, of knowledge. Most of them don't even have that. So, it is, there is the greatest need is to put a great effort in building that, something that will stay. And building something which, which will stay is, we cannot, we cannot build stones and, and, and any kind of, not palaces, no castles, no fortresses. We can do something which is far more enduring. We are not building pyramids, but we have to build people. These are, this is what stays. We have to build people, more and more people. We can be moved from one country to another, but the people should stay. And so we have to build them. We have to, to, to give them more power, which is not just knowledge, but something which is as, more, as important as knowledge, which is involvement. Involvement, which means an attempt to, to be identified, an attempt to be unified with, with the fact of being Jewish, if, if I would put it in, in short. We all, each of us has dozens of points of identification. I'm, I may be so many years old, a male, a, a husband, a father. I'm working with a certain, a certain profession. I have certain degrees and so on. The, all these are ways in which person identify themselves as well. Where do I live? what language you I speak, and so on. But there is the point, one of the questions that people should ask themselves, not just others, is there is a point of identification which is, I am Jewish. Now, of course, not only people that are now listening, but many others still have this point of identification. Some people, possibly in your own communities, need to have some gentle pressure to, in order to find out that they are indeed Jewish. It's not always easy. And some people need more pressure, I see, to testify before the court to, to, and, uh, and to say that they, they are Jewish. But I'm, I'm not speaking just about the, a point of identity. But if one makes a list of all these points which, in which one identifies himself, so the, the question is not only what is the list, which may contain, as I said, dozens of points, but there's something else, which is, what is the importance? What is the hierarchy? What is the order in which I put these things? Now, in, let me put it in general. In, if I want to survive as a Jew, this piece of identity, that I am Jewish, cannot be one of the last points in my, in my list. If it is not one of the first points in my list, then I cannot do anything about it. It has to be, if you ask, who are you? So, one of the simple questions, I'm a human being, I'm a Jew. That is a point of identity. If that comes as an afterthought, if that comes as a, as a, me- a matter of memory, that is not important. So, as I say, that is the, the importance is the identification, the involvement, and building for the future. And it is surely a very hard job, but it has to be done if we want to go on living. Thank you.